So now, do you know that parental nutrition is of two types? One is TPN, that is a total parental nutrition, and the second one is PPN. So hi dreamers, now let us discuss one very important teaser and this is a small crisp teaser on parental nutrition. So when we talk about parental nutrition, the first thing that comes in our mind, what are parental nutritions? So parental nutrition is not the nutrition via IV route. It is rather defined as delivery of nutrition in elemental form via intravenous food. So this is energy given in form of elemental you can say elements in the IV root. So now do you know that parental nutrition is of two types one is TPN that is a total parental nutrition and the second one is PPN. What do you mean by PPN that is peripheral parental nutrition many a times people say partial it is not right it is wrong. So it is peripheral parental nutrition. What is the classical difference in between them? Answer is the root of administration. If you talk about the root of administration, root of administration, TPN is via central intravenous route. So via central intravenous route. And when you talk about the PPN, if you talk about the PPN, it is via peripheral, it is via peripheral intravenous route. So we have TPN we have PPN and this is what is very 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 important. Now both these parental nutritions can be available in two forms. One is 2 in 1 and one is 3 in 1. So the image that you see in front of you has three compartments. This is for carbs, this is for proteins and this is for lipids. So how do you identify a whitish milkish structure is generally the emulsion full of lipids. So this is what is a 3 in 1. Now when we talk about 3 in 1, the carb lipids and proteins some people say a fat free it is not right it is without any lipid that is what is very important so 70 percent 20 percent and 10 percent and this is 70 to 80 percent here in this carb nothing like lipid and 10 to 20 percent is proteins now along with this they have lot of other important things they have insulin they have ppis they have sterile water to dilute, sterile water to dilute and along with that they have multivitamins, multivitamins and essential elements and all the essential elements. Now you all have to understand one very important thing about parental nutrition. Why this 2 in 1 and why this 3 in 1? This is all the difference between developed and developing countries. Now it is believed that 2 in 1 is not having lipids. If you talk about lipids, we have omega-3 coming from the soya and omega-6 coming from the fish. Now these lipids will break down into arachidonic acid and nicosapentaenoic acid. When you talk about arachidonic acid, this is definitely going to break down into prostaglandins which actually halt the process of inflammation and prolong the hospital stay. So this is said that if a TPN component is prolonging the hospital stay, so we don't want it because ultimately the insurance who is ruling the developed countries, they are actually having an overburden of the hospital stay. So what is the role of lipids? Answer is it's important for assimilation of vitamin A, D, E, K. So it is said that majority of the patients in developed countries are not chronically malnourished. Thus, they don't use 2-in-1. Uh, they don't use 3-in-1. They use 2-in-1. So the same company, Frasinus Kabi, or Baxter is manufacturing 2-in-1 for US and 3-in-1 for India. So this is the difference. Again, how do you give the lines that we preferred is subclavian. Why subclavian is preferred? If you have done, since you people are surgeons, you must have done a central line. It's very easy to insert an internal jugular. You can do single handedly. But why it is not done for nutrition? Because the line will be hanging like this. So if your line is firmly placed over the chest wall, it becomes a lot easy and convenient for you. So always remember one very important thing that you have to understand is that the line is firmly fixed and the ergonomics of the patient is improved. Now this nutrition is given for 18 to 20 hours. Imagine a line dangling over the neck and this is going to disturb a lot of ergonomics. Now if you talk about the complications, the most 
common complication of a catheter related complication is a sepsis and that is why we need to cut 5 cm of the tip and send it. Most common complication of catheter is sepsis and most dangerous complication of this catheter insertion is the pneumothorax. However, if you get most common complication of parenteral nutrition, answer is hyperglycemia. So, hyperglycemia greater than fluid overload, greater than fluid overload and this is more than more than electrolyte imbalance. In electrolyte imbalance, you can have hypo as well as hyper. Subscribe and press the bell icon so you never miss an update from PrepLadder.